it on the truck. Now, I always think about how to start to tell my story, and I'm going to pull a page from Jennifer Lopez. I don't know if you know this, but she has an album out. It's called This Is Me Now. So this is me now. She did an album 20 years ago, and it was called This Is Me Then. And she recently put out a short film that tells her story over her journey for the past 20 years. So I'm going to go back to This Is Me Then and tell you my story uh, for the past 14 years or so. In 2010, I had my daughter. Seven weeks after she was born, I was a single mother and a domestic violence survivor. I was put in a precarious situation where I had to figure out how would I take care of this newborn. So I decided to work for a company, which I'm sure you've heard of, European Wax Center. It's one of the largest wax franchises in the United States. And I quickly loved it. I was a waxer, I got to meet people, get out of the house for a few hours. And I quickly rose in the ranks of positions within the company. I became a trainer. I became a manager, I became a call center manager for multiple locations, and eventually an operations manager. I worked for the company for seven years. We received all kinds of accolades nationwide. And after seven years of working with the company, I one day came in and realized they sold the business to a friend without speaking to me about it and basically sold me with the business. I had started with them when I was 25. I gave them everything. I did hiring. They basically gave me the key and said, this is your baby. And I, I was naive and I was young and I was like, this is great, I love it. But really, I was being taken advantage of the entire time. So as devastated as I was, um, it was the first time I had ever thought about entrepreneurship. Because had I owned my own business, this probably wouldn't have happened to me. So after I regrouped, I thought about uh, what was important, all the skills I had learned, all the mistakes, good and bad, management, training skills that I gained, they couldn't take that away from me. And it only made me stronger. So I like to call that real life university, right? Sometimes you get knocked down and you move forward. So let's fast forward two years from there, 2020, so 10 years from when I started height of the pandemic. We had our shutdown in March. In April, uh, I, saw, I did an LLC. April 11th is my birthday. I decided to do it because I realized that I was gonna be getting a divorce. My husband had become an alcoholic and it was not gonna be sustainable moving forward. And I had my daughter ready from a previous relationship and she was beginning to resent me. So for the second time in my life, I'm like, I have to start all over again. What am I going to do? Everything's shut down. So I talked about it with my baby and I said, listen, we're gonna get out of this situation, but we're gonna have to make some sacrifices. I know that it's gonna be hard, but we will get through it. So I left my baby at home. She was nine, maybe 10 at the time. Bought her a cell phone. I said, I will check in with you, but I have to make money. So I started doing in-home services. I packed everything up, grabbed the bed, the table, the wax pot, and I grew my clientele, 200 people, but then I got burnt out. That wasn't sustainable. How would I continue to do this business long term? So I reached out to my dad, who's an engineer and an avid car guy. He loves cars, he builds them for a hobby, and I said, what if we put this beauty business of waxing and spray tan on wheels. And he said, let's shop it around. Let's see what we can do. I saved up all my money from unemployment, any money that I had made, and we purchased a sprinter in cash. And he said, you draw it, I'll design it, and I'll build it. So I drew it on a piece of paper, what I wanted the interior of the trunk to look like, and three months later, we had a finished product. I rolled it out, and that first year, I grew 62%. I, it was the best decision I had ever made, and one year later, from the time that I started the business, so I started April, next year in May, my daughter and I moved out and got our own apartment. So it was exciting time, but I knew I was gonna have to grow. 
So I have a friend from the SBDC in North Jersey. All this time, my experience with European Wax Center, I had become a board member on the North New Jersey Chamber of Commerce. I had become a chair in the Hudson County Latin American Chamber of Commerce. So I had been working with the community, and now it was their time to help me. Um, I went to a speaking engagement at the Garden State Plaza. I met a woman named Jennifer Glass. I told her about my business. She came to me after the presentation and said, have you ever heard of a show called Shark Tank? I said, yes, I love Shark Tank. I, I follow their model, right? Find a problem, solve it. That's what I do with my beauty truck. And she said, well, we have a new show coming out. It's called America's Real Deal. And it's gonna be the first ever equity crowdfunding television show where people at home can invest from a QR code right from their couches. They can vote for businesses that they want to see grow. And we think you're a perfect candidate. Can you speak with our producer? Yes, by the end of the week I spoke to the producer. I said I would do it. Shooting time was gonna be in six weeks. I was so excited, except the following, they had requirements. I had to come with a comprehensive business plan. I had one, it wasn't comprehensive. They asked for a pitch deck. What the heck's a pitch deck? They want a two year financial review. Uh, I just do my numbers in my house. Um, there was a lot of things that I, pieces that I was missing and they assured me that they would give me guidance but I had to do my best and come with what I had. Okay, great. My clients referred me to somebody to help me with the package. I literally stayed up for four weeks straight, day and night, putting this package together and I went to go do the show. Again, I warned them, I don't, I have holes in this. When I got there, guess who's up day one to present me? It did not go well. Okay, I was nervous. I didn't have answers for some of the questions. I literally cried day one when I went back to the hotel room. Why did I come here? And I had all the doubts that a lot of business owners have. I'm not good enough. How can I do this? And then I thought about my daughter. We Look how far we've come. So I made a call back home to the person, Ruthie, who was helping me with the package. We revamped. And day two, big board, 10 people around the table. We had real estate tycoons, angel investors, all kinds of people that were gonna hear my story, pitch masters. And I pitched. And at the end, every person said yes. So, it my feelings of the best feeling in the world, and since then, a lot of things have happened. When I came home, um, the show was streaming on Amazon, Roku, Prime, YouTube. I mean, it's on there. It's called America's Real Deal. It was on episode two. And I got a lot of support. They helped me fill in some of the gaps or the questions that I was answering. Um, and I got a lot of speaking engagements. I was able to do, I worked with the SBDC at uh, Ramapo. I raised $20,000 there. Um, I went back and I got a certification to do permanent makeup tattoos so I can increase my portfolio and my service ticket amount. And you know, all these things happened and they were coming out on a business level, but my private life was also soaring because when you're happy, it, it goes beyond. So I lost 25 pounds. My daughter, she is a pre-professional dancer. She just got into Alvin Ailey in New York City. I wound up getting married this past July to a friend that I've had for 12 years. And all of that because I finally believed in myself and was able to be self-sufficient. And this past October, I opened my first brick and mortar uh, studio for permanent makeup in Englewood, New Jersey. And so I'm here, this is me now. Um, I'm here today to tell my story and I'm here to grow. So I have the opportunity to do a licensing agreement for my trucks. So if there's anybody out there that wants to have their own beauty business, or if you know anybody interested, please come and, and chat with me. I definitely took advantage of all my resources. I have two grants with the NJEDA. I did their application for these uh, NJ Zip program. So to get emission free vehicles, I put in for two more vehicles. I'm, actually at the ending process of that, so hopefully they'll be coming in the pipeline soon. 
Um, we did another grant with them for small businesses uh, in e-commerce. So they gave me $11,000 for my website. And yeah, I, I guess my takeaway is don't be afraid when you get setbacks. Keep pushing forward. Use the resources that you have. Build community. Lean on one another. It takes a village, whether it's business or it's your home life. It really, you need to be open, willing to learn. And yeah, if you have any questions, that's my story, guys.